All right, so I'm gonna start out by showing you some, some stuff. Let's see. Oh, can I do a slideshow of those? I lost the screen where I saw everybody. That's okay. Yeah, the view is changing now. Lisa is doing that on purpose so okay. that uh, all right. you all are able to see a, a, a PowerPoint that she's gonna show you, which right. I think will have uh, demonstrations on uh, patterns for crochet. Yep, there'll be some patterns and also just some inspiration for photos um, uh, that, you know, what these hearts are to me and just seeing them in different contexts. So I'll try to be quick about that. Um, if any of you have met me before, you know I can talk a lot. So my goal is to scale back on the talking and do more demonstration. But I want to show you some of these hearts. Part of the inspiration for these hearts is that... Um, uh, I just started making them a couple years ago. There was an event at Nitty City Yarn Shop and down in the, they, they were involved in an event down at the um, City Bakery. And it was a wonderful evening. I think Vogue Knitting sponsored it, lots of knitting things going on. And we were making and demonstrating how to make hearts and spreading them around the room. And I learned a strong lesson that night because, you know, I was at the table, we were making hearts and, and, you know, some of the yarn was quite wonderful and expensive yarn and lovely and we were making these hearts and and the goal was that these hearts would then be um you know it was an event an activity that night but then they were going to be decorating the window at the yarn shop and some of the people working there making the hearts started giving them away and i thought oh okay so the point is i realized my heart was a little closed I thought, wait a minute, you can't just give all these away. You know, we've worked really hard making them. And I was thinking of them, you know, uh, you know, the work that we put into them and I was being a bit selfish about it. But then I looked around and it wasn't, I wasn't in charge. So I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> and I looked around the room and I saw some of the people walking around, they were wearing them on their sleeve. They had them, the wait staff had them tied on a tray and this and that. And people were laughing and smiling and having a great time. And it was an icebreaker and that they brought people in and going, oh, what's the heart. Oh, they're making them over there. And I thought, wait a minute, open my heart and pay some attention here. So I started making hearts. And that's where I learned this particular pattern. I've tweaked it a little bit. And um, I started making them and handing them out in the subways of Manhattan. And just randomly, it's an icebreaker, you know, people see you knitting or crocheting and they say, hey, lady, what are you doing? Oh, my grandma does that. My mom is making me something. And it's, it's such a human connection. So then someone said, oh, you should hashtag them, which is, you know, giving them this little tag. And I thought, no, 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 I want it to just be random, flown out into the world. But then I started getting curious, where do the little hearts go? So you'll notice on this one here, there's a, there, this is a, a heart that I made and we're looking out the window. It's, um, my heritage is Norwegian and I'm, I visited Norway last summer. And this is the region of Norway where my grandmother lived. There's a beautiful cultural, uh, nature interpretive center there and um, in the in the dining hall these were the tables so you ate on these tables that were glass covering oh, sand I and and objects and so I found this heart shaped something so I put my heart next to it and took a picture this is a uh, at Nitty City yarn shop I was mentioning that's where I get the yarn that I use um, it's this uh, chunky encore encore chunky I'll show you more closely when we work well, you can use any yarn, but that's the yarn that I've settled on because I like how squishy it is and it's nice to hand out. So these are the, the tags. I think you can see my cursor moving on the screen here. These are the tags that I attach. I make them and I punch a hole and I attach them to the hearts that I hand out to people. And then um, people will send me a message on social media and I've connected with people that I never otherwise would have met. And um, so here's me in an elevator at my friend's house and I've got bags and bags of yarn. Okay. Oh, and I wanna call your attention to this. If anyone is, uh, you know, even if you're not uh, working on a sewing machine, this is my old necky sewing machine, which is built like a tank. It's in a straight stitch and it's wonderful. And I opened it up out of a box. I hadn't opened it for years because I'm using a different machine. And it said, you will be traveling and coming into a fortune. It's an old fortune cookie that I had from uh, about 25 years ago. Okay. What you're seeing here is a, it's a posting from social media. So this is a description of the, what someone posted. There's a Northfield yarn shop in Minnesota where my mother lives and I teach classes there sometimes when I'm there. So I taught a class on this heart making. The hashtag or you know, moniker that I use for this is called love people be kind. And so I made this knitted bag. It's a 
uh, seed stitch or slip stitch bag. Um, linens, it's a linen stitch, double double rows of linen stitch, and in case anyone's curious. Hey, and I use that, that for, the, for the hearts. Yes, ma'am. Um, it seems like we are seeing uh, the file lineup that you have. Yes, you are. Um, okay, and you're not gesturing at like specific images, right? Oh, you're not seeing this image here? I am seeing an image of the crochet pattern preview and then many oh. files down below. Yikes. Okay, thank you for saying that because that's not what I... Oh, you're seeing the... Thank you. Wowie. Thanks, Anai, for helping you're us. Seeing? Is it gone now? Oh, uh, we're still seeing the crochet heart class, I think. Yeah, so now that is going away. How do you see this? Do you see a bunch of hearts hanging there? Uh, not yet. It seems like there might <gasps> oh, be a... I'm so sorry. Thank you for telling me all this. Um, That's okay. <laughs> okay, now do you see oh. Teachers College? <laughs> okay. Um, I am not seeing that quite yet, but I'm wondering if my screen is... Does anyone see? It's just a plain blue... Oh, resume the share. Okay. Hang on. Okay, I'm stopping the share. Thank you for telling me that. Have I just been yammering on and you don't even see what I'm thinking you're seeing? We could see the pattern and your cursor was gesturing over things, but there oh, wasn't a change in the images. Okay, thank you because that... <laughs> I was seeing all kinds of pictures and... <laughs> right. Oh, dear me. All right, let me try this again. Wow, I'm so glad you're telling me that. OK. Uh, back to the Zoom. Oh, am I? Oh, am I? Oh, where is this? Oh, my screen's gone. Oh, nay, nay, nay. Okay, do you see um, something that on the upper left here, it says Lisa desktop in a blue? Uh, uh, let's see, now I am, yes, yes. You're, we're seeing yes. the share now. Okay. Now you see something right. that says Zoom 12, 19 p.m. Okay, that's um, All We're right. seeing the big uh, chart uh, Direction. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now you see something that's just some colors right. without words on it. Okay, yes. all right. right. So. All right, let's go for it. I'm just, I'll just show you a couple pictures. Do you see this picture of a heart on a black background? Excellent, yes. good. Okay, so um, I'll just be quicker about it then, too bad. Um, this is, uh, so I've got, I'll tell, just tell you about this project. So I was talking about these, these uh, images where I'm handing out hearts throughout the cities. This heart may or may not still be hanging on the ladies' room door at the El <laughs> But I just leave a trail of hearts around the world. Here is one in uh, Minnesota next to a goat. goat, goat heart. I did not leave the heart there because I'm sure he would have eaten it. But, uh, and this one is, I, this one's very special. I wanted to show you this one. Um, it's not my intention to be religious in my classes. And, uh, but this uh, image of Mary, a friend of mine has restored this. She's a, her husband actually is an artist and he has restored and cleaned off years and years of paint. You can see some of the, grime on here. Um, this is a special place to them and they decided to give a couple hearts to the Madonna and they were there for weeks and weeks and one day she came to me, we worked together, we see each other almost every day, she came to me and she was upset and she said someone stole the hearts from the Madonna and she was upset about it and she's like who would steal the hearts and I said you know what maybe the Madonna gave them to somebody, maybe somebody needed them. So that is something that's a, a special connection between us. And I wanted to share that story with you. Um, here's a little swatch from my office where I can't be right now because we're all in social, social distance land in our homes. But um, this is a piece of knitting where I'm knitting with some plastic garbage bags, recycled bags. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to crochet and plastic. Yeah, it's a great way to reuse some things and they make lovely mats. And I have a bunch of hearts hanging in my office. And of course I need to bring some nature in. So there's an old stick. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to let's go to the subject at hand. Um, this is where's the little pink heart? Here's a pink heart. Do you see the pink heart? So this is the heart that we'll be making today. 
And we start, I'm going to talk through music. Do you see my cursor moving on the screen here on top of the heart? I'm going to just talk through how the, the kind of roadmap of this. Uh, you can't see that in the center of here, there's one string. I use a magic loop technique, but today we'll be starting out with a chain two. It'll be, it will be um, uh, a little more, uh, we should do that. So we start out a loop in the center here, and then we make chain three here. And then we do three triple crochets and then three double crochets all into that center hole. And then I do a chain one. I'm going to talk through this in the pattern also. And then I do a triple crochet for the bottom of the heart. We want a, a long stitch, tall stitch to be the point. And then do another chain one. You can see that empty space. And then I do a one, two, three double crochets and one, two, three triple crochets. And when I'm finished with my stitch, when we make crochet stitches, we're at the top of the stitch. So I'm up here left in the wind and I need to somehow get back down into the center and draw that line as if I'm coloring it. So I do a chain three and then I do a slip stitch attachment in the center and then I'm done. So again, I start here, I go around and then up and over. So usually with a heart, we have a mirror image this side is the same as this side if we flip it over in the mirror. So here are, so here's our heart, right? This is the heart I just showed. And as we travel around the heart, so I start here in the center. I put some different colors here because I know it's, it's different, people's eyes see things differently. So I hope that this um, image is, is um, easy for you to view. So I start in the center here with some sort of a ring, some sort of a circle. I could actually use, I could, you know, there are many crocheted and macrame key rings that are made. I could start with some solid circle like a ring, but what I do is I make a ring with my yarn. So I make a, a ring, we're gonna use a chain two, and then I start here, frequently on a crochet charted pattern, the starting point is a black dot. That's a slip stitch right there in the middle. Then I chain three, and then the green ones are triple crochets all into that center hole. Then I do three double crochets, the brown ones are doubles, and then I chain one, and then I do another triple crochet at the bottom point. And then you'll notice that the right hand side is a mirror image of the left. I do a chain one, three doubles, three triples, and then chain three and a slip stitch to the center. So that's what we're going to do. I have written it out in terms of charts. So if we strip away the design, that's what the chart would look like. Um, usually the chart would all be in one color, but I thought it was easier to make it in different colors. And then this is my handwritten. <laughs> I don't have access to certain things at home right now. So this is my handwritten version of what I just said. I usually start with what I call a magic loop. We're going to avoid that today because it's a little cumbersome for our hands to use. Um, we're gonna do a chain two, and in that second chain, we're gonna make the entire heart. So the next level of it would be to do the same thing, but using the magic loop. Okay, so I am going to leave this on this screen so you can see it here. And, oops, there we go. I'm just gonna leave those, you see my penmanship? It's quite extraordinary, right? Okay, so I'll put that there. Maybe that's, it's, everybody can see the whole image up from the top words magic loop down to center. Is that on the screen there? Okay, so now, um, shoot, actually, I can't do a share of that. I have to unshare that screen. Okay, I'm stopping the share, but I have, I have this image um, that I will have here for you to see. Okay, so I have written that out here. That's right here. And if anyone didn't get a picture of it, and I'm curious, does this show up in reverse? Is this a mirror image or can you read these words okay? I'll, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna have them next to me here. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch over to the, um, the um, video. So if everyone could go into the upper right-hand corner of your screen, find the image that is the, where my fingers are moving right now of the yarn and the hearts and the tools right over here. So wiggle your mouse over that 
And then you'll see that those blue, that blue square with the three dots shows up. And I want you to pin that video. If you pin that video, that should be the big one on the bottom screen or the bottom part of the screen, large. Raise your hand in your, uh, your frame if you got that. So Susan okay. and Marilyn, I'm seeing that you need some help. Marilyn, I'm unmuting you. Um, yeah, um, I, I need help too. Yep. I'm just gonna keep the four screens. Okay, Marilyn's gonna keep multiple yeah, screens. I'll, take the, I'll keep the gallery. Okay, that's fine. But this yeah. image where I'm moving my, my big blue crochet hook, that's what we'll be looking yeah. at. I'll keep, yeah. so I'll keep for those the gallery. Who, great, so for those of you who can or want to, if you wiggle your mouse over that one, then you can see the option to pin the video if you want. And when I'm looking at the video of everybody, the gallery view, there's no difference. But if I, I click up on the top right hand corner and see speaker view, then it's the blue hand that's speaking. <laughs> okay. So again, here's the, I noticed that some people wanted to do a screenshot of that image. Here is, if you want to take a picture, here is that pattern. I'll hold it there for a minute and then I'm going to move it out of the way so I can do the crochet demonstration. Oh. Okay, I'll just leave it I on the bottom. See it. I'll Let's leave see. It Susan, it. you have a question? Yeah, I don't see, I don't understand why we can't just look at her hands. We have to do all this pinning and stuff. Why, why do we need? So if you can see the screen with the supplies, that is okay. If you pin the screen, however, it will make the image larger. So if you I feel... Don't know. I don't see the mouse on this thing. I've just recently started using this. Where is where is the mouse? Um, so if you have your mouse in your right hand, you can take the cursor and hover it over the screen where Lisa's hand is now, where there's the yellow yarn and the blue crochet hook. Okay, okay. Once you have your cursor hovering over that screen, navigate up and click on the blue square with the three dots. Wait a minute. I just, um... I, I'm, I'm using a phone. I don't have a mouse. I don't know what you mean. Oh, interesting. So you might actually just be able on your phone to just tap the screen. No, it just. Right. It oh, just you know what? I can, I can log in on my computer. I normally do that. I just didn't realize we. Okay, I'll just do that. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Just looking at the 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 on the cell phone. It's fine. Okay. I, okay. So friends, I think as long as everyone can see both Lisa's. Uh, screen where her face is and also the screen more importantly where she's going to be demoing up close where she has that heart in her hand we should continue on um, and thank you to those of you who have more experience with zoom we appreciate your patience Lisa let's continue I'm not hearing her. Great. So we are all seeing Lisa's hand uh, in the frame, but we are not hearing Lisa speaking. Lisa, uh, are you speaking right now? Uh, I think, friends, because Lisa is focusing on the demo screen and not the screen where her face is displayed, we are not hearing sound right now. Okay, Susan, I'm seeing some beautiful blue yarn. No, no, it's green. Um, it, do we, I mean, Worsted, wait, I was confused. Um, should I, I have so much yarn, I, should I use a thicker one? This is a four. Should I use a five? Yeah, let's ask that question to Lisa in just one second. I am not hearing Lisa right now. Uh, so I don't know what happened to my picture that it's uh, not looking at me, but looking at my yarn, but that's okay. Well, I think that on your phone, you may have flipped it around, but I see that you have us up on your computer as well. Yeah, right, I had to, because it's just, yeah. So 
Um, so this is a four. I don't know. I looked up worsted and it seems like a type of wool, but I, I don't buy wool yarn because it itches. So I only have um, like acrylic and this one is cotton. Yeah, so Susan, I think with regards to yarn types and supplies, let's save those questions for the end. Um, yeah, but I, I want to know what to use. That's the thing. Got I it. Don't... Well, I am not a fiber artist. I'm mostly a playwright. So let, give me just one second and let's check in and see. Uh, Lisa, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. We couldn't hear you before. Yes, so, my, com my computer crashed and that's the one I had the audio on. So now because I'm on the audio with the demonstration, the pinning should not matter. <laughs> oh, great. All, All right, right, so uh, go back to a screen share, then it will. But um, uh, okay, so great, here we are. I heard there was a question about yarn. I just wanted to show you this is the yarn that I have been using. It's on cord oh. and it's acrylic and a little bit of wool. I do not like to be touching wool with my hands. If someone ha someone gave me a gift of some Icelandic wool, I've never used it because my hands break out. But there's such a small amount of wool in this one that it's fine for my hands to use. So um, I'm trying to log in back on the other. And uh, friends, I'm gonna put the type of yarn Lisa is using in the chat. So you can click on that link if you were uh, so inclined to order it. Yep, it's Plymouth Encore. Plymouth is the name of the company. Encore is the type of yarn. Chunky is the weight. So I use that with my size J crochet hook, I or J, whichever one is available. And we're not necessarily going to make the same heart that I do in terms of it being a long necklace. But if you want to have it be a long string that hangs down as a necklace around your neck, I found that a good length is I go from my elbow to my end of my hand which is probably about 14 inches to give it a bit of a string. And then I start there. I'm gonna show you, so hang in there with me and just watch for a minute. And I'm gonna show you what I do and then I'm gonna show you the modification, which is what we'll start with. So I start out with a loop, just like this. It's, it's a completely uncommitted loop. It's just like this. And I go in there and I start my piece and I leave my fingers in there so I can keep putting my stitches in that hole. I chain one, two, three, and again, bear with me, I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate, but then I'm gonna show you the easier version. Yarn over the hook two times for a triple crochet, go in the hole, plant the stitch. Now, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's our first triple crochet. But this beautiful stretchy loop, I can make it tight and small, but it also gets really big and unwieldy as I'm crocheting. So I never start someone out this way. That's mm -hmm. the, if for those of you with more experience, you might head towards that, but it gets big and it's hard and my hands get a little cramped. So I'm taking that out. This is what we're gonna do today. I hope that the yellow yarn is easy for everybody to see. So, um, so I'm gonna start with a slip knot. Here's how I make my slip knot. I'll show you that again in a minute. So this is probably familiar to everybody. We start with a slip knot. Uh oh. So now I'm, I'm starting with the slip knot. This is the version we are going to do together. Here's how I make my slip knot. All right. So again, I do this and I pull that loop through like this. And then I stick it on my hook and tighten it up, but not too much. Let it be loose. The t if I had a nickel for every time I said loosey goosey in the classes I teach, oh, I'd have 95 million nickels. Okay, now I need to create a space into which is gonna be the center of the heart. So I'm gonna chain one, two. So I have two chains. Sorry, my window's open because it's so warm in here. The landlord has the heat blaring and you're hearing some traffic outside the window. So now I'm going to say that this first chain that I made is where I'm going to put my all of my stitches instead of that center magic loop that I showed you. So now I'm going to hold that. I like to mark it and I pull it a little bit and I stick my ring finger there. So now I need to get away from the center of that chain. 
uh, the heart, just like here, I'm, I'm going to do these three blue chains. Let me move that up a little closer so we can see that better. Forgive me for just a second. Closer to the Thanks for hanging in there with me, ladies. We're adjusting to learning new. <laughs> Everybody's learning something new. Okay, I'm going to shove a Kleenex box under it. <laughs> there we go. So it removes it up a little bit closer to you. So again, we're going to start right here. So that chain two space is this. All right, so this is the position I'm in. Now I'm going to start with the chain one, two, three. If you're looking at the chart, it's the blue stuff. Over here in the red box, it's the chain three. So one, two, three. So now I have something that looks like this. I've got that center hole and there's my first part of my heart. Now I'm going to make three triple crochets. Here's how to do it. I yarn over the hook once, twice, and it is important. I want to point this out. Sometimes people, and if everybody could look at my hands right now, sometimes people wrap the yarn this way, that's going to cause you a problem. So wrap it from the back over the top towards the front. One, two. It does matter that wrap. Now I take the tip of my crochet hook and I insert it into that very first chain that I made. That's where I'm planting the stitches in the center of the heart. And I yarn over the hook, pull it back just through that center spot. Now I've got four loops on my hook and I work them off. Most of crochet is done this way. Yarn over the hook, pull that new loop through two. Yarn over the hook, pull it through two. Yarn over the hook, pull it through two until you're down to one loop. So here we have the center of our heart, the yellow thing here, the three chains, the blue, and I've got my first triple crochet. I'm going to turn this heart as we go. Now I'm going to make another triple crochet over the hook two times, go into the center, yarn over the hook, bring it through. Is everything going okay? I can, I'm on my tiny screen on my phone. If there's, I think it's going okay, but if someone needs attention, I'm not able to see everybody's image. It seems like everything's going okay. I was actually just communicating that it was cold in my house. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will mute myself and I'm gonna go shut the window. I'll be right back. Okay, I saw a hand wave. <laughs> okay. All right. So there I am, I've got the first chamber of my heart. So this is this area of the heart. I've got the chain three and the three triple crochets. Mm -hmm. Still trying to get back in on that other. Okay, so those are my three triple crochets. Now I'm gonna do the three double crochets, which is the brown ones here. So I, I yarn over, to do a double crochet, I yarn over the hook only one time. And then I go into the center of the heart, yarn over the hook, bring that loop through. I call that planting the stitch. I, I'm not much of a gardener, but I, I, if in another lifetime, I would love to be one. Um, so I think about flowers when I'm making my stitches. So now I've got three loops on my hook, yarn over the hook, pull through two of them, yarn over the hook, pull through the last two. So there's my chain three, triple, 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 Double, I need two more doubles. Yarn over the hook, go in, pum, pum, pum. Yarn over the hook, go in, oops, dropped it, pum, pum. Okay, so now in terms of our heart, here's what we have happening. I've got that much of the heart happening so far. So now, I need to make the bottom point of it. And where did my little red heart go? This is an interesting thing about, you know, these stitches are subtle. You know, it's just a, it's a little string of yarn in a loop and, and we can really create something extraordinary with it. So I wanna point out that this is the spot we're at now. Right here, we're gonna do a chain mm -hmm. one. And the reason we're gonna do it is that we're gonna put this long stitch here, a triple crochet, and we want we want it to have a chance to be a point. So rather than fill it up with some bulk on either side, we have those chains there. So that allows it to 
fall in a little bit. That's what helps it make it a point. So now I'm going to do a chain one. Now the triple crochet, which is the bottom point, yarn over two times, go in the center, plant the stitch. Now I've got four loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so there's half of my heart. Hopefully the best half of my heart. And you see, because we have that chain one there, this will kind of smush together and that can point out a little bit. So this is the point we're at now, halfway. So I've made half the heart. Now I'm gonna do the mirror image on the other side, except not for this, not for this middle point. That's the axis on which it all turns. So now we're gonna make the same stuff here in the reverse order. So if you're someone who likes to look at the written word, I have back to the, again, back to the beginning, we did a chain two, and then we did chain three, three triple, three double, chain one, and the one triple crochet, that's the point, the bottom point. Now, I shortened my terminology a little bit, but th this is the same as that. This is the mirror image, chain one, three doubles, three triples. So that's what we're gonna do next. Ah, my computer is back. Okay. All right, so here's a... You're hearing some noise from my phone. Forgive me, there's something I forgot to turn off. Or I don't know how to turn it off. Technology is wonderful. Is anyone having uh, a love-hate relationship with technology? <laughs> I'm gonna give jazz hands on that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, continue. And I'm back on, oh, or, or. okay. All right, so I'm back over here. Okay, got both func devices functioning. Okay, so I've done my three doubles. You guys are probably already done with your heart. And if not, don't worry. We're gonna do this a few times. If you're in the weeds, we'll get you out. Don't worry. This is a, a loving, supportive community, and I don't want anyone to be discouraged. And I thank you all for bearing with me as I'm adapting to this new technology. <laughs> One, two, three. See the difference between the height of those. See, there's the doubles, and then the triple get taller. One more. Now, I was joking about us having 100 hearts made, but we could have a couple made, and they might not all look like they'll, what they will look like in a week or so. That's okay. So now I'm at the spot where I've just about, wow, the size is perfect. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't realize I had made it to scale, this chart. Um, now I need to get back into the center part of the heart. So I chain three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna bring it down into the middle and attach it. So again, I use the magic slip stitch. It's a beautiful thing. It's a height of zero. So I go into that center hole again and look how big that hole has gotten to accommodate everything. Yarn over and pull through. Now I take my scissors, which do 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 do, where do they go? Here they are. And I pulled off a bit of a, you know, I showed you that I use my arm to measure out my string of yarn. So what I do is pull that yarn along the other one and cut them approximately the same length. All right, so now I'm at this point where I've cut the yarn from the ball. I'm gonna move the tissue box because I need that depth of image there. Okay, good. All right, so now I'm at this point here where I've got this slip stitch that I just made, but this yarn wants, if I pull this yarn through, it's gonna come through the front of the heart and it's gonna lose this uh, securing aspect. So now what I do at the very end, I yarn over the hook and just pull everything through. And I've made a knot and I tighten it up and I snug it up as much as I can. 
but I'm gonna, because I use the chain two technique to start out with, my hole is gonna stay that big. If I use my other magic loop technique, it will get much smaller Then I can. Um, so the difference between these two, here it's very small and here this is the size it's gonna be. So now at this point, I tie a knot, I set my hook aside, tie a knot. And if I'm thinking of this in terms of something that's gonna hang, it's gonna, it's gonna hang and we're looking at the, so if we want the heart, we, if the palm of my hand is the heart, it's currently hanging like this and it's like that. So when I look at it from the front, it's scrunched together and I can't really see what it is. So this is the heart like this. So I have my trick that I use. First of all, I stretch out these like this and then I take my hook and this is part of the anatomy of the stitch. You see these V's that go around the edge of the heart. That's the top of each stitch. Usually if we're making a, a second or a third row, we're gonna insert our hook under both of those legs of the V, I call it, the front loop and the back loop. Here's the front loop and there's the back loop. So what I do here, so the heart doesn't hang like this. I want it to be loud and proud and spread out like that. I find the front loop of the last chain that I made and I shove my hook in there. This is a good reminder of let those stitches be kind of loose. And then I yarn over the hook with one string and I pull it through. And then I go to the very first chain that I made, if I can get to it. If I can't get to it, it's really buried down in there. Maybe I can go into the second one. I think I can get into the first one. I only take the front loop. See what I mean by that? There's the front loop and the back loop. I just take one loop, the front loop, and then I pull the other string through it. So now these strings that were made in a knot on the back are in the front. And when it's hanging on a wall or on my neck <laughs> or however, key ring or whatever, now these are the strings that are gonna pull at it. So now I do a slip knot, uh, I'm sorry, a square knot with those two strings. And then I'm done because from that way it will hang down straight. And because it's hanging from this point, this knot that's on the front of the heart, it will, it won't hang like this. It'll say, hi world, here's my heart. Isn't there the, I wear a heart, my heart on a string. I got, there's a song I need to learn. So that's that. And I have shown you a few of these. I have this little one that we just made. Here's one that I made with this size Q hook. I think it's a Q. I had this when I was a kid. Uh, there's no number on it anywhere that I can see, but in my head it was a Q. Maybe I thought that was queenly or something. So I use this hook to make the same kind of heart, but I use six strands of this yarn. And it's really huge and it's, you know, like this work that we just did was kind of fine tuned and it's close to our body and we can get a little cramped up doing it. But with this one, I'm actually pulling big lengths of my arms and getting a real workout with it. But this one, look at the size of that hole. I can really, I, that can actually be a picture frame. I can say, oh, what's that in there? You know, there's a whole, a whole thing in there. So that's what that is. And, uh, I don't know if anyone else is feeling any tension in their body, but I'm in an awkward position leaning over the camera here. So I'm gonna sit for just a second. And it's a good reminder to periodically when we're doing this kind of work, just relax a little bit, roll your shoulders, set the work down. Um, our hands can get really cramped up. Our hands work hard when we do this. So if you just roll your shoulders a little bit and breathe, breathing is important. these basic things to inhabit our bodies that sometimes we forget. So I'm gonna make another heart. It's uh, 1250. And um, I wanna show another heart to take you through the process again. So I, I wanna ask, I, I love Sophia's idea of the jazz hands to show me if, uh, if it's coming through. Is this color of yarn okay for you to see the process? Is that okay? Okay, good. Yeah, because this, you know, the red is so dark on the camera that I thought, you know, it's hard to see. 
with these stitches. So I'll make another one with this yellow yarn. I also have this yarn, but I think that might be with all the colors, it might be a little difficult. So I'll make another one with the yellow and then we can compare having, having the uh, magic loop and having the, uh, the other one. You know, the first time I had my hands on camera like this, it was about oh, 10 years ago. There was an event at, oh, oh yes, a question, question, Marilyn. I've been using magic loop, which I find every time I do it very difficult, but I've been, I made like 15, 15 hearts or more with that um, yes. for the Jewish hearts and for, and for holiday gifts for my family. I like this better. <laughs> do you? <laughs> you know, you know, that is really good feedback for me to hear because I, you know, I do things the way I do them. And then I teach things the way that I think makes sense for people. And, you know, once you've done things, you know, with these hearts, I'm not kidding. I've, I've made at least 7,000 of them and handed them out into the world. Um, and I can guesstimate the, the quantity based on, I get X number of hearts per balls of yarn. I always buy the balls of yarn here or there. And it's like, wow. <laughs> so but if, you're showing, but if you're showing Magic Loop again today, I'm going to watch because every time I need to learn it, every time yes. I do it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, um, so it's something that I take for granted how I do it. But I'm, I'm really glad that you gave me that feedback because that is so helpful to me. I'm trying constantly to learn to be a better teacher. And I really appreciate you telling me that. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. My string of yarn here. I don't know if anyone else's house is like this, but it's like a macrame pit in here. I've got yarn everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I have yarn everywhere too. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful thing? I love it. I've been making a sweater and I've been cut weaving in the ends from knitting. So, and it was multicolored. So I have oh, yarn. Bless you. That is a lot of work. Okay, so here we go. We're going to make the same thing. And does this roadmap make sense to everybody? I hope. Uh, so we're, again, we're going to start here and up here and then boom, 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 boom. And that center point on the bottom, once you've hit there, you know, you're home free because you've already done it. You're just going to do the same thing again and then slip stitch. Okay. So again, I'm um, going to use my I, uh, This is a uh, Wendy. Um, everything went great. I got all the way. And, but then when it was the slip stitch in the center, I got lost as far as the finishing. So uh -huh. when you go through that. But other than that, I have a little heart. Good. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That is so yeah. good. So, so let's take a little inventory. How is everybody doing? And, and please, you know, if, if you don't know how to do something, you're not the only one in the room who can't do it. So, you know, if, if is the, are you okay with the double crochet, the triple crochet, um, the chaining at the beginning? If, if anything in particular you want me to go over, I, I'll go over it again. Um, so let's do one of the hearts and give us the wave, wave, wave if you need me to go like this and say, Lisa, stop. I need to talk. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that. Wendy, let's see it again. <gasps> it's fantastic. So how about that? Everybody hold up what you've got so far, even if it's nothing. <laughs> hey, that's good. You made it around the circle. No, that's thumbs up. Oh, hey, look at that. It's a ribbon yarn. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I love it, ladies. Oh, this makes me so happy. I almost said it makes my heart happy, but it, which, that's what I mean. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so again, here's what I do. I measure from my, here's my elbow, to my wrist, you know, and I stretch it. And, you know, because I give these out to people, and I'm short, and so a lot of people are taller. I measure that much, and maybe I pull a little bit extra in case someone's really tall. Now, here's how I make the magic loop. It's very similar to how I make the slip stitch, the slip knot. I just don't complete a slip knot. It's a slip knot that's not completed. Uh -huh. So here's how I make it. This over here is where the, this yarn is attached to the ball. This is the yarn that's, I'm gonna make a real short, short string just to keep it easier. So here's the end of the yarn and the yarn over there is attached to the ball. <laughs> so I take the yarn and I just hold, I'm right-handed. I hold the yarn and I just wrap it around my finger like this. That's all I do. Now, if I were to make the slip knot, I would complete that by pulling that through. But it's an incomplete, it's an incomplete slip knot. Again, here's how I do it. This tail of yarn is hanging towards my body and the ball of yarn is further away up. 
and I just hold that yarn over my index finger and I wrap it like this. Bloop. That's it. So I have this little loop. And again, doing it on a flat sheet of paper, I loop it like this, oops, and around. So it's like this and just looped over. Now I take my hook and I insert it in there. And if you want to, if you want to help yourself out frequently, I'm, again, I was saying, if I had a nickel for every time I said, if I had a nickel for every time I said, let the table be your friend, you can, you can put the work down on the table and hold it down there. It can help stabilize things. So if I keep my hands down on the table and I'm reaching through here, now, just as I put my, my ring finger in the hole here to kind of point where I'm going to go, I'm going to yarn over the hook and pull it through. Now, here's where my my loop is and it's gonna be wider and smaller it's this um can you do that again please can you please do that again absolutely absolutely okay so i start with the yarn like this and then i wrap it around like this and then flop it over right so it's just loop the loop right then instead of pulling this loop through, which would, this would make a slip knot. There would be my slip knot. I'm yeah. just not pulling that loop through. So again, here's the same thing. I wrap the yarn like this and like this. And I'm going to let the table be my friend. I'm holding my hands down there. Get myself in position. Whoops. So I put my ring finger there. My, my ring finger is marking where I'm going to put my stitches. You can see it's just kind of hanging in space. So I go in there, yarn over the hook, pull it through. Wait. Yep, I'll do it again. All right, so here's the, the yarn. I wrap it around like this, like that. See, it's just, a, it just goes whoop, whoop. And then I reach in here and I'm gonna, grab that yarn, the yarn that's attached to the ball, and pull a loop through. So that's, that's where I'm at. It's a very simple procedure. I'll do it again, because I know it's, any, it's a simple thing, but once you've done it 100 times, it's simple. But I'll do it again. And I thank you for the opportunity to try to put this into words. That's a good challenge for me, All right? And then I insert my hook in there. And then I wrap the yarn that's attached to the ball as opposed to the tail. I pull that through. That's the start of my work. Now into that same center hole, that's where I'm gonna put all my stitches. So now I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. Now look how big that loop is. I'm gonna pull on this tail. I'm gonna leave my ring finger in there to, to keep it keep it working, but I'm gonna pull on that tail to make it smaller. The challenge with this one is that that hole keeps getting bigger and then I can feel some tension coming into my hand a little bit. Now I'm going to chain three to start it. One, two, three. And notice that I have to keep pulling on that string to make it smaller because it wants to get bigger and accommodate all these stitches. So now again, how I make my heart is three triples, three doubles, a chain, and then a triple. Then the mirror image. So now I'm going to yarn over the hook two times, go in the hole, plant the stitch, yarn over the hook, one, two, three. Now I'm going to quickly blow through this, this, I'm going to make this heart very quickly, forgive how fast my hands are going, because I'm going to start another one with the chain two, because that chain two is much easier to manage. So I know that we're running out of time here because someone, me, talks a lot. So again, here's the half of the heart. And I've got this big gigantic hole here. So for my purposes, I'm gonna set this aside and then I'm gonna, you know, this is pulling the steak half done out of the oven. I'm gonna set this one aside and then we'll have it as a comparison. And I'm going to start my other heart. So for those of you who are finding this a little cumbersome, and please, everybody, 
probably finds it cumbersome to start with this magic loop thing. You can see why I don't start. Oh, I, I like your version of the magic loop better than I had. Ah, I'd be curious to know yours, if you have a link or something. Uh, it was in a book by Leisure Arts, but maybe I was learning it wrong. It was... Yep. Well, you never know, there, and there are different ways of doing it. So now I'm going to go back to the original way. So if anyone's finding that magic loop frustrating, and you will not be alone if you are. I want, I want to finish my magic loop one. <laughs> okay, that's good, that's good, wherever you're at. So, so I'm going to start again. I don't again. want to remember how to do the other one, too. <laughs> Good, so I'm gonna start the other one. And again, it's gonna be very similar to this magic loop, except it's a slip knot. So I start with my slip knot, which is the way we almost always start our crochet. And I put it on the hook. Now I'm gonna chain two, one, two. There I've got, so I, now I identify that first chain right here. There's my knot, there's the first chain, and I'm gonna kind of pull that a little big get my ring finger in position there. So I'm, I use that to hold it, to stabilize it when, when I have my ring finger there. And also it gives me a place to point towards. It's my North Star, I guess. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna start the heart. I'm gonna chain one, two, three. Now, three triples, three doubles, chain triple. Here I go. Here's a triple. Another triple. A third one. Now I'm going to do the doubles. I like to think of these as chambers of the heart. It's, uh, I don't know, I'm someone who likes imagery and metaphor and um, I'm a singer and I, I am interacting with a lot of poetry and uh, so I think of this little string of yarn, this five yards of string of yarn is. Where are you going? Stores. No, it's not right. You're on the internet. It's not right. You are on the internet. It's not right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna finish this heart and have it sitting here as an example. And then Take a look at what you ladies have. Oops, I have a one, two, three, one, two. Oops. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I'm gonna do my chain three to slip stitch. So this is my, my big heart here. The heart, the big center hole. Now I'm gonna do this final maneuver. So I've made the entire heart, except uh, in this scenario, I'm at the point where I'm making those three blue chains. On the, on the written words, I'm at this point here in the red box, chain three. So I chain three to get down to the center, three. That'll help me travel down, oops, travel down to the center. Now I'm doing the slip stitch to join. If you've ever um, joined something into a circle, this is probably how you've done it. So you insert your hook into a space, in this case, that big center hole, yarn over the hook, pull it through, and then pull it through that loop. I'll do it again. So I'm at the spot where I just completed, and I know someone specifically wanted to, to see this, this maneuver again, where I'm doing the slip stitch at the center. Here, I'm gonna do it again. So I chain one, two, three. That's the reason I chain that three, and if you've ever done a, a granny square or certain flowers or something, sometimes a pattern will say, chain three counts as one double crochet. That's kind of what this is doing. It's such a big piece of real estate that it has to reach all the way down into the center. And it almost looks like a, a double crochet stitch. So here is my chain three. Now I reach down into the center, yarn over the hook and pull it through everything. And that's my slip stitch. Now at this point, I'm gonna cut my yarn. And I don't wanna just pull it through because then this yarn is gonna come from the back to the front. I really wanna secure it at this point. So I yarn over the hook, pull it through everything 
to make a knot. And then I'm done with my hook for a minute. So there's the heart. Again, there's that slip stitch. And I have this big string here. That's the, if you, if you um, think back to what a chain stitch looks like, you've got the V's on the top and then there's that underside nub. What we're seeing here <clears throat> is one of those strings depending on how we made it. So now I'm gonna tie this into a, a square knot to secure it. And again, this version gives me that big hole. That aside. Now here's the other heart that I was making. This is the one that had that magic loop. So I'm going to complete that one. Um, Kasha? Okay. No. Oops. And I can really get into the Zen of the moment with these things. So each time I do it, I count to make sure I didn't do too many. One, two, three. Now again, here's the slip stitch to join for anyone who wants a reminder and refresher of what that looks like. So I've made, I've made the entire heart, but now I'm gonna slip stitch, I'm gonna go into the center hole, yarn over the hook and pull it through. Lisa, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but Anna yep. has a question, I think. Um, yes. And I'm trying to get her, uh, Anna do you wanna ask Lisa your question? Uh, well, I think at this point, it's too late. No, that's I, okay. No, it's I was too late. The first triple, the, the first triple that you put on, I don't know how to put the, uh, put the needle through after you've put on the, um, the, after you've looped over two, so you end up with the four. Yep. I don't so know I how to, I don't know where to go from there. Okay, great. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you. No, there's, and then I, also, please. if you could keep the instructions clear so we can see them and I, I can even if you're going on and talking i can still keep following along uh, uh okay so i should move that back up higher right move it up closer well, no, it, where it was is fine but just you cover it up with yarn uh right yes and i have such a small space here that yeah right okay, okay good thank you thank you any feedback i really welcome we're all getting used to this new new thing Marilyn, I see your hand let's let anai have just one moment okay. to get some clarification and then we'll come to you Okay, so I'm going to make my start one, two, three. Okay, there's my chain three. Now I'm going to do the triple, right? So to do a triple, I yarn over the hook one, mm -hmm. two times, and then I go into the center hole and I yarn over the hook and bring it back through just to plant that stitch. And see, I'm keeping my ring finger in there. Now I've got four loops on the hook. Now what I do, I work them off two at a time. Yarn over the hook and pull it through one, two. Now I've got three. Yarn over the hook, pull it through one, two. Now I've got two. Yarn over, pull through two. There's my triple crochet. It's pretty tall. I'll do another one. Yes, good. Okay, so over two times, one, two. Go into the hole yarn over the hook, bring it through just to plant that stitch. I think of this like a flower and I've just planted it. So I have four loops on my hook. I work them off two at a time. Yarn over, pull it through one, two. Now I've got three. Yarn over, pull it through one, two. Now there's two, yarn over through two. So I've made this very tall braid. That was it. I didn't know um, to go two at a time. I, was, I thought it was like one, then two, then three. I, I really couldn't figure it out. Right, right. Yeah, so thank you, two at thank a time. you for asking that. So, and, so when I go in here and I say, I, I, that's part of why I come up with this terminology. I, I plant the stitch because here I just come through one. Now I come through two, two, two. Yeah. And that's on the great. double, you do the same thing, two, at a, two and two? Okay, so the, the way the double is different, I only, I prepare by yarning over one time Go mm -hmm. in the hole, bring just one loop through to plant right, it. Three. Now it's three. Now yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So it's two and two. Every time it's two and two. Okay. 
Yes. Got it. Except, yes, perfect. And thank, thank you. you for asking about that because it is a tricky point because at first when you plant the stitch, you, you might be going under one string, two strings, 12 strings. So I just say you go into that space, bring one loop through, then you make the stitch. So thank you for asking for that clarification. And someone else had a question. Marilyn, I think it was Marilyn. Uh, let's see here. Marilyn, I'm unmuting you. Marilyn, can okay. we hear you? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. we're ready for your question. Okay. Thank you. Is anyone doing anything for the hospitals with the hearts? like to put on the outside. Ah. You know, Does anybody know like uh I know like Naomi Rag, does she do anything or any from from Nitty City? Uh, question. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know and I know that um um uh what's the name? One of the women who's working uh, through Creative Center um in the hospitals um uh, in that program a year or so ago had started making these hearts. But I don't know if you could bring them inside now. I, I mean, just like outside to hang for the, for the first responders and the doctors and nurses and stuff, because I don't think you could bring anything inside a hospital now. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Um, I don't even know about bringing anything to, you know, I know people write on the floor with chalk and stuff, but I don't yes. know. Yeah, and you know, I like I was saying, this project is something where I have um, I've been giving out these hearts uh, into into the world, and um, I've really felt like I should stop doing that right now because yeah, yeah, uh, you know, who wants to endanger themselves by accepting anything from a stranger right now? I mean, it's strange enough in pardon me in normal times for me to give. Yeah, I just something for my mother-in-law and I sprayed it with Lysol I made <laughs> before I mail it to her. I know yeah when we mail stuff to our mom or anytime she gets mail now she knows she lets it sit in a pile for a day before she yeah I said all my I, I got yeah. some things I ordered from QPC they're sitting on the floor <laughs> I don't yes. open for about four days yes I know that's that's what we're all doing we're finding ways to uh <laughs> to really um you know, change what we do and adjust our behaviors and try to be as safe as possible. It's kind of crazy, but anything we can do. I mean, my, my thought, I mean, it's easy to get scared. Um, and I'm grateful for the people who I can talk to and the friends who encourage me and just say, you know, a day at a time, take it a day at a time. And we just do the best we can and plan, plan the best we can. And, um, yeah, but I, as far as these hearts, you know, I, I would love, I'm like right now in, a, in an emotional way in the world, I would love to be handing them out into the world, especially right now. But, you know, here's a pile of yarn. God knows the germs. Of course, my hands touched it to make it, you know. Um, so, so that's, I don't know. Thank you, Lisa. No, I think that these are really good thoughts to be thinking about how we can be making things to distribute out in the world. I would ask everyone to start by just taking pictures, take pictures to chart your personal progress and take pictures to share and connect with other people. And we're about to be at 1.15. Uh, um, so can I just ask one thing? Can I, can I yes. mail a check or you have to do it online? So, I think Marilyn, okay. I can send you an email about that. Uh, there's no one currently going to our office. So we oh, okay. do think online would be best. Okay. If you really are compelled to donate, I think it would be possible uh, but I have to speak with our director about where that check would need to be sent. All right. Okay. Otherwise, you know. Um, this is uh, Wendy. Um, I didn't see that pop up about, you know, making no donations. So I would need that information also. Good sure thing, Wendy. Um, um, do you have I, you know, my because email? I didn't... Yeah, my email. Well, my email. So if everyone looks oh, in the email. chat right now, yep, right. I just sent you guys. Um, you can follow us on Instagram if you have an Instagram. You no, can also check out our website for other art making activities that you can do by yourself at home. And if you have any more questions for me, please email me at info at the creative center, which I'm typing into the chat box. Yeah, which I, I've never found. You know, that was the problem. I don't know where the chat box. Oh, there it yeah. is. 
So go okay. at the creek. So, but the thing is, to make the donation, is there a thing to click on someplace? Yes. Yeah, so there's a whole page on our website for donating. Oh, on it. the website. Yes, and I'll post that again one more time here. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I'm really happy that you all were able to join in. The last link in the chat is the donation link. If you can donate, we would really appreciate that. Um, and I would just like to thank Lisa so much for her time. She had so many strategies to share uh, her her teaching methods today, and I really just am so grateful that she could spend time with us. Yes, and um, I, oh, um, I wanted to make an uh, answer. Could you send a picture of her directions on the website, and then we? Because I couldn't take a picture. Yeah, Lisa and now, I will coordinate. Yeah. She can send yeah. that picture and I will forward it uh, to all of you. If you uh, can give me, Wendy, you're on our mailing list. Is that correct? Yes, I think okay. so. So Wendy, I have your email. Uh, is there anyone who may not be on our mailing list? Marie Claire, I have you. Uh, Marilyn, I have you. Uh, Susan, I have you. And Anai, I have you as well. Do you have, um, can you give the directions for, for both the magic loop and, and going oh, into that? Sad. <laughs> you know, I haven't, I haven't written out the directions for magic loop. I don't know how to write that out. <laughs> I oh, okay. on my finger. You know, I just, I, I make, I guess the best way to describe that is that it's, it's almost a slip knot, but not quite. Yeah, okay. I like, so. if you could take a picture of the way you put it on the table, maybe. Yeah. And email me and put that on the email, that picture of when you're putting in the loop. Because okay, I like it was it was a little easier than the one I was using. Yep. Yep. And so um, to clarify, just one little thing. So at the beginning, you if I'm with the uh, more the slipknot person, not the loop person. So yes. The slipknot. You change. You make the slipknot. You chain two, then you chain three into the space of the first chain. That's what you do. Yes, and yeah, here's okay. the th yeah, and and for someone being really super nitpicky about it, which I'm not, <laughs> but since so so I hear I'm pointing to the to the screen here where I've got uh, this is how the heart is made: chain three, do all these stitches. There's a triple crochet at the bottom. Come here at the end, you chain three and do a slip stitch to the center. Right. So yeah. at the very beginning, so I've got this chain three at the beginning and the chain three at the end to be mirror image of each other. Right, right. But technically, if I'm starting with chain two and I stick my stitches into the beginning, I've already got a chain in there. So you right. can probably chain one. And then as long as you're going under just one loop, chain three. So, so instead of start with a chain two, um, just start with a chain one and then a chain three. If anybody cares about that, that is so nitpicky. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just ignore yeah. everything I just said. But in order for this to be absolute mirror image, the beginning and the end, the beginning and the end, this chain two that we started with, it could just be a chain one and then do your chain three. So, yeah. And again, here's, here's the magic loop. I'll just put it here on the table so you see it. So I've got this yarn, this string here, and I just loop the yarn over like this. So here's the yarn and I just loop it over. Whoops, there's my magic loop. Okay. Lisa, there on the uh, magic loop heart, can you show us how you make that center uh, circle smaller? Yes. Uh, is this a, I gotta make one. This is where you find out that it takes me a minute and a half to make these, ha <laughs> ha. And also, uh, Lisa, is there somewhere we can find the pattern for that second heart? I think you called it uh, the linen stitch. Oh, uh, that bag? Wait, I showed... Well, what, for the invite uh, from, from the Creative Center, there were two hearts. The one you showed us Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a knitting stitch. <laughs> there we go. Yes, the knitting that's stitch. my mistake. As someone who is not a fiber artist, I put the knitted hearts for the crochet class in the flyer. So oh, well, I, I apologize. That no, but okay. that was fine. There was one of each. There was a knitting and a crochet. Yeah. Um, so well, that's where, fine. Where would we find the knitted heart? Oh, you know... That might be a separate class for a separate time. And I can well, communicate could you with Lisa could you the, the, about that. I'm happy to communicate with Lisa about that. Uh, but yeah, we that are now cool. at 120. 
So again, if folks have follow-up questions, those can be emailed to me and I'm more than happy to redirect those to Lisa. I'm gonna make a super, super fast heart. Takes me a minute and a half. So we can do the, actually it's not even gonna be a heart. It's just gonna be a round thing. Okay, I'm just gonna make something to get around to the other side. It's not even a heart. It's a crazy, wacky, life beat up my heart. That's okay, I'm still going. Okay, so here I am back at the, I've made something, let's call it a heart. And I'm gonna do a uh, chain three to get back to the center. So let's say I, that's my heart. One, two, three. Now, here's how I close that heart up. I just pull on this string, just pull on that. And then I do my, before I close it completely, I do my slip stitch to join, cut the string, yarn over, pull it through. Now this is the, this is that magic loop that kept getting bigger. Now it's gonna get small, Oop. tighten it, pull it up. See how small it is, it's completely closed up. If, even if I wanted to put a hook through there, I'd really have to shove it through. It will open back up if I want it to, until, so at this point, I pull it tight, then as soon as I make this next slip knot, or the, this square knot on the back, that's what sets it. So if you wanna have a hole in there, leave a hole, and then once you make that knot, that sets it. You um, just pull, pull that string. Yeah, hi. Is it possible to get any sort of a video of the process? Because my aide, who's actually here making me food and stuff, she's very good at crocheting. We learned at the library, she doesn't even speak English, but she like followed the librarian to a T and picked it up so fast. Mm -hmm. So like if she could see you do it, and even though she does it right-handed, I do it left-handed, she mm -hmm. could teach me based on what you, teach her or yeah. do we look can we look this up online somewhere i don't know that it's online anywhere it's possible um i've had several requests from people to make a video which is it's fairly easy to make a video but it is a lot of work and i just oh, okay. haven't had time to do it but actually it is my plan to do it very soon um especially because what's going on in the world you know many people are saying, oh, how do you make those hearts? I want to do that. So it's on my list for very soon. So as soon as I get that out there, um, it will, I'll put it on YouTube and I'm, I'll probably have some singing on it. So, la, 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 here's how to make the heart. And, um, and then we can spread that, that word through, through uh, the creative center. 